All right, good evening, fifth graders. Tonight, we're going to be working with multiplying whole numbers and decimals. Remember, since the beginning of the year, I've been saying that we need to know our math facts? Well, here you go. It's time to be using our math facts that we've been learning and refreshing since the beginning of the year. Let's kind of take a look at how we're going to be doing these today. We're going to start off with some mental math. 3 times 8, we get an answer of 24. Now, if you don't understand this stuff yet, I need you to press pause and work it out and try and see how I'm doing this stuff. 3 times 80. Well, I do 3 times 8 first. I get 24. I'm going to go ahead and add this 0. 30 times 80. I do 3 times 8 first. I get 24. Add the two zeros. 300 times 800. 3 times 8. 24. Add 1, 2, 3 zeros. Same concepts over here. 6 times 5, we get 30. 60 times 5, well, I get 30. Then I add a 0, 300. 60 times 50, I get a 30. Add two zeros. A common thing is some kids count the 0 and the 30 as one of their zeros. It's not. You have to multiply the 6 times um, 5 first. 6 times 5, I get 30. Now I have to add the three zeros. One, two, three. All right. Take a look. Some of you have maybe have learned how to multiply different ways over the years, especially with long multiplications. You probably learned this partial products way with whole numbers, where you're multiplying four times 200. We have this four, you multiply by 200, then four times 30, then four times six, and then you add them all up. Well, I've seen fifth grade handwriting over the years, and it never looks this beautiful. Sorry, some of your handwriting, I guess, can look this beautiful. For the most part, when you start when you start multiplying like this, the columns get all messy, get all mixed up. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be multiplying um, basically the old way. Old school is what I like to say. It's how I learned. It's how your parents learned. It's how a lot of you are probably multiplying. Um, I've been talking to the fourth grade teachers over the years, and I'm hoping this is how you have been multiplying over the years. Basic facts here. I'm going to do a couple of these just to help you out. First of all, I'm going to do... This number, this number, and then this number. Let's go ahead and take a look. 3 times 5, I have the number 15. I'm going to put a 5 here and put a 1 up. 3 times 9, I have 27, plus this 1 up here, I have 28. 3 times 2, I have 6, plus 2, I have an 8. Move on over. 8 times 7 is 56. 7 times 0 is 0, plus this 5 is 5. 9 times 7 is 63. 534 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20. Then I have 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 2 is 17. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26. Okay. So I hope you're noticing we're going up, and then we're working our way over to the left. Let's look at a couple more of these examples. Now I have two digits, okay? And I, and I put some decimals in here. I'm going to kind of leave the decimals out for now. Take these decimals off. Initially, I thought that'd be a good idea, but I'm working it out with you here. First of all, I want you to don't even think about this four right now when you're multiplying, okay? I wouldn't cross it off, but I just want you to understand don't even think about the four. First off, I'm going five times six, I get 30. Then I'm going to go five times two, I have 10 plus three, I have 13. Now, it's always important to erase the top, we want to clear start to the top. And let's cross off this 5. We don't need any more. Now I'm actually going to be multiplying everything by 40. Okay? So you put this place value holder here. Now you don't have to multiply everything by 40. You can multiply everything by 4. 4 times 6, I have 24. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. I have pretty neat columns. Now I go ahead and add these up. 0, 7, 1, 1. 1,170. Let's take a look at this problem over here. And of course, pause at any moment because you're better off working it through with me than watching me do it and trying to remember it for tomorrow. It's not going to work that way. You have to try these out on your own as well. 8 times 5, we have 40. 8 times 6, we have 48. Plus 4, we have 52. Now I have to erase this 4 up top. I'm going to cross off this 8 because I don't need it anymore, but by crossing that off, I have to put a place value holder here. Now everything's going to be multiplied by 20, but by putting this place value here, I don't need to. I can just multiply it by 2. 2 times 5, 
I have 10. Better make this a better 10. 2 times 6, I have 12 plus 1, I have 13. I'm going to go ahead and add these up now. 0, 2, 8, 1. 1,802. Should probably write a little neater for you. Over here, 7 times 2 is 14. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 1 is 17. I'm going to go ahead and erase the top. You see, kids, it's just a system. If you know your facts, this should be simple. If you don't know your facts, this might be taking a little longer. I'm going to cross off this 2. By crossing off this 2, I have to put a place value holder. Now I'm going 3 times 7, which is 21. i put a 1 here. I'm going to put a 2 up top. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 2 is 26. I'm going to go ahead and add these up. I have a 4, I have an 8, I have a 7, and I have a 2. 2,784. It's just that simple right now, okay? I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to press pause. I'm going to give you all the answers to these with my work. Go ahead and take a look. That's how you solve these. You can kind of take a look at how you did. You know, maybe I made a mistake when I'm going through here because I was going through these pretty quickly. But as you can tell, I always did a place value holder. I'm going to put all my place value holders in green. So you can kind of keep in mind that that helps by multiplying here. I'd be multiplying by 10, 70, and 40. By putting the place value holder, I was only multiplying by 1, 7, and by 4. All right, let's take a look and see what we can do with some decimals here. Now I've got decimals in my problem. The nice thing with multiplication, kids, is you don't have to line up the decimal. It's not like adding or subtracting. You just go ahead and work out the problem. Let's take a look here. 7 times 0, I have 0. 7 times 7, I have 49. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 4 is 46. I'm going to go ahead and change my colors here. Cross off this 7, I'm going to add the 0 for a place value holder. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 7 is 42. And I guess kids get confused here. I'm going to put the 2 here, the 4 up top. That makes 42. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 4 is 40. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add these together. It's a different color once again. I have a 0, 9, 8, 4, 4. Now, my answer is not 44,890. I'm going to take out a red here. Whenever you have a decimal in the problem, you have to take a look. How many numbers are after the decimal? Please, please watch this closely. There's two numbers here, 1, 2. There's another, there's one here after the decimal. So I count one, two, three. I start here where this decimal is and go one, two, three. So my decimal is actually there. So my answer is 44.890. We'll do this problem. Nine times four is 36. Nine times four is 36 plus three is 39. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11. I'm going to erase the top so I don't get confused. Cross off this 4, make a place value holder. 8 times 9, I have 72. 8 times 9 is 72, plus 7 is 90. 79. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 7 is 23. I'm going to go ahead and add these up. 6, 11. 11, 5, and 2. How many numbers are after the decimal? 1, 2 numbers are after the decimal. 1, 2. Decimal goes right there. So my answer would be written as 251.16. Over here, where are my decimals at? My decimals are right here and right here. How many numbers are after the decimal? There aren't any numbers after the decimal. So my answer, there'll be no numbers after the decimal. Take a look at these. There's no numbers after the decimal. The decimals are always right here. They're imaginary decimals because we don't need them. So that's why there's no decimal in the answer here. There's no decimal in these answers. Okay. We're going to do this one last problem. Please make sure you're pausing and try them out yourself first. 5 times 3 is 15. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 1 is 25. 3 times 7 is 21. Plus 2 is 20. Change colors, erase, place value holder, cross this 3 off, make it a 0. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. 
I have a five. We have a five. We have a ten. We have an eight. We have a one. Both decimals are to the right, so there's no numbers behind the decimal. So my comma would go right there. Hopefully this helped you with multiplication. Tomorrow I'll be ready to see how you're doing. Once again, if you're struggling with your multiplication facts, um, the bookmark on the top of your Chromebook says um, your multiplication math magician. Go ahead and go on there. Try some different things on Math Playground. Um, I'm really worried about you on the times threes, times fours, times six, sevens, and eights. Okay? Please work on those math facts. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.